The Honey Badger, Mellifera capensis, is a mustelid that is native to Africa, Southwest Asia, and India. It more closely resembles a weasel rather than a badger, but is black, white, and gray. It has a long body, a broad back, a short snout, and flat head. It has a reputation for being aggressive and bad-tempered, and has been known to scare away the likes of hyenas and lions. They have very powerful front paws with long claws that they use for digging their prey out from underground. Here, we ask the question, could honey badgers survive in North America? If we look back to the earliest honey badgers, or what were thought to be some of their earliest relatives, fossil evidence suggests they did once live in North America. Today's honey badgers are similar to America's skunks with their distinctive black and white coloration and a gland able to deliver a stink bomb if they feel threatened. So, where do they live? Let's first look at their geographical range and whether this bears any resemblance to North America. Modern-day honey badgers evolved in Asia during the Pliocene, between 5 and 3 million years ago. They are now found throughout the whole of Sub-Saharan Africa, as well as Algeria and Morocco. Their range extends through Arabia and Iran, and into India. Their extinct ancestors lived 7 million years ago during the late Miocene. One such ancestor was called Benfield's honey badger. Although this species was similar to today's honey badgers, it was slightly smaller and was less of a digger. It possibly behaved more like dwarf mongooses, who can dig burrows, but prefer to use those already made by other animals. As the honey badger lineage evolved, they became more expert diggers, relying on their sharp claws to break open beehives and dig up a range of other animals that live underground. Traveling even further back in time to around 10 million years ago, and it is thought that some of the honey badger's ancestors lived in North America, as well as Eurasia and Africa. These two genera were called Eomelivora and Echorus, and were nicknamed the giant honey badgers for their large size. Fossil evidence suggests that these honey badgers stood 2 feet, or 60 centimeters tall at the shoulder. They had usually long legs, and were capable of running at great speed in pursuit of their prey. Over the years, the only extant species of honey badger became the animal it is today. Well adapted to its environment and listed as least concerned by IUCN, it is a successful and widespread animal. So, would North America's climate be suitable for honey badgers? Would there be enough habitat to sustain a population of this ferocious omnivore? Most of the honey badger's habitat is in hot, dry regions. They rely on digging in the dry soil making tunnels 9 feet long and 5 feet deep, with chambers at the end for them to rest and remain cool in. Females will line this chamber with grass, forming a soft bed for her to deliver her cub. They are highly adaptable animals. Although they prefer dry land, they can also be found in woodland and open grasslands. They will create homes in rock crevices, under tree roots, or use burrows dug by other animals. North America has such a wide range of climates offering a huge variety of temperatures, some of which are comparable to Sub-Saharan Africa. Central and southeastern regions are broadly subtropical, the northeast humid continental, and towards the northwest a mixture of Mediterranean, arid desert, and even subarctic climates. Honey badgers that thrive in Sub-Saharan Africa live in tropical, desert, temperate, and arid climates which can be found throughout North America. The male honey badger's home range is around 200 square miles, whilst the female tends to remain within 50 square miles of its burrow. North America's native badgers usually have a home range of just one square mile, and so introducing this foreign species would mean that they would need much larger areas to live in. The Great Basin Desert, the Mojave, and the Sonoran are just a few of the deserts found in North America that could be considered suitable for honey badgers. They are rarely observed drinking water from watering holes. Instead, it seems they get most of their water needs from the food they eat, which means that they can survive well in desert environments. The Gulf and South Atlantic states in America have a humid subtropical climate. Northern Arizona, New Mexico, Central and Northern Nevada, and Utah have a temperate semi-desert to desert climate. The Southern Plains, Lower Midwest, and Central East Coast have a humid temperate climate. 
These are just some of the places that would provide the climate and habitat that honey badgers are used to in their current geographical range. But would these habitats provide the right kind of food for honey badgers? Honey badgers eat pretty much everything and anything. In fact, a study in the Kalahari found that they consumed 60 different species of prey. They have the least specialized diet of the weasel family. They are omnivores, feeding on insects, frogs, tortoises, turtles, lizards, rodents, snakes, birds, and eggs. They are excellent tree climbers and adept at swimming as well. They locate their prey using their excellent sense of smell. They walk along, sniffing the ground and pausing at burrows and holes along the way. They then use their long, sharp claws to dig out animals from their burrows underground. They also raid beehives, eating the larvae and lapping up the honey. They have incredibly tough skin to protect them from their prey, including bee stings. They are also known to scavenge lion kills, scaring away lions before having their fill. They are said to be so tough and fierce that they can kill and eat black mambas, one of the world's most venomous snakes. They also feed on three-meter-long pythons, cobras, and highly venomous adders without any problems. Their success as a species is probably partially attributed to their ability to eat and survive on such a wide range of food. It makes them adaptable and less susceptible to food shortages, competition with other animals, or the effects of climate change. In North America, there would be a huge variety of animals on which they could feed, both in the deserts and in the open grasslands. Small mammals such as jackrabbits, kit foxes, and a variety of rodents are found in the Mojave Desert, as well as reptiles, such as tortoises and rattlesnakes, and Great Basin collared lizards. The swift fox, prairie chicken, and bobwhite quail are common in the Southwest Plains and could be considered prey for the honey badger. In terms of diet, we believe that the honey badger would thrive throughout the United States. It can eat such a wide variety of food that it would be unlikely to struggle in any of America's wildernesses. Of course, its ferocious appetite may affect the delicate ecosystem in which it would occupy. They are known to cover distances of more than 40 kilometers in a single night and dig up to 50 holes over a 24-hour period. Although honey badgers have a wide geographical range and are not considered rare, their population numbers are declining. They are persecuted, particularly by landowners. They pose a threat to livestock, sometimes ripping wooden planks off hen houses or digging through concrete floors to reach the chickens inside. It is very difficult for dogs to kill them, as their skin is incredibly tough and very loose, allowing the badger to wriggle free and squirm its way out of the jaws of a potential predator. Poisoning is typically the way that people kill honey badgers that kill their livestock. In some parts of India, they are even known to dig up human corpses to feed on the remains. In Kenya, the badgers are considered a major reservoir of rabies and are therefore considered a dangerous species for people and domestic animals. We believe that honey badgers would survive and probably thrive in parts of North America. There would be the climate and habitat that they are used to in Africa available in the States. There would also be plenty of food available for them. They may come into competition with other species for their food sources, but with such a wide and varied diet, this is unlikely to affect the honey badgers. Of course, introducing such a successful species onto an entirely new continent could wreak havoc on the ecosystem already there. That's all for today! If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching! See you next time!